all the women in the locker room area started to kind of whisper to each other and everybody just kind of started like signaling to each other. Exclusive. LA mom recalls her shock after person with a beard and penis got into women-only hot tub with her six-year-old daughter at Weisbau where clashes between trans activists and rival protesters broke out last week. Welcome to the Dumb Dumb News channel, dedicated to reviewing news stories from around the world. Help me trigger the YouTube algorithm by pressing the thumbs up button, subscribing to my channel, leaving a comment, and sharing with someone you think would like this content. Sources will be linked in the description, so you can read the full details yourself. The article further says, Anita, a millennial daughter of Latin immigrants, says she is a Democrat voter and a supporter of the queer community, but felt compelled to speak out about the thorny issue in an exclusive interview with DailyMail.com. Anita, who asked DailyMail.com to obscure her identity in fear of being cancelled and losing her job, was dismayed to come across a viral video alleging a similar incident at the spa. In the locker rooms, everyone's nude. In the co-ed areas, everyone wears the the little Wii Spa t-shirts and the little outfit. So we went upstairs and there's like a restaurant and that's where the children's room is. And there's a bunch of co-ed saunas, but everyone's clothed and there's children. The Korean people bring like their whole family to the spa and I thought that was really cool. I thought that was really awesome. And there's like a rooftop and we went up to the rooftops. And so we had a really nice day. And then my daughter knew that there was a hot tub and she wanted to go like quote unquote swimming. And so we went back downstairs to go to the hot tub and um, you know, we got undressed and we got in the hot tub and we played and she splashed around and it was really cute. And we were in there with like a few other women who were just completely nude. And then um, three people came in, two of them were female and one of them looked like a man with a beard and like a five o'clock shadow, like scruffy beard and their penis hanging out, like fully hanging out. And uh, my impression at that time were that they looked very young, like young activisty people. Um, the women had tattoos and colored hair and the person with the penis had like kind of scraggly hair and the beard and was kind of thin and tall. And they came over to the hot tub and they sat on the edge of the hot tub with like their legs in the hot tub, like people do right before they get in the hot tub. And so at that moment, um, you know, all the women in the locker room area started to kind of whisper to each other and everybody just kind of started like signaling to each other and you know there's like maybe i don't know 15 to 20 women in the locker room like just kind of spread out in that area and in the hot tub with me there's like maybe i don't know how many like a few like two or three you know women or so and so the women in the hot tub with me and i we started looking at each other in the eye and kind of signaling and making this face like like oh my god like what what the heck like we are all like signaling silently to each other and motioning to my daughter who was like to my right and so i'm motioning to my daughter they're motioning to my daughter and we're kind of silently communicating like i know i know like oh my god and so it was this weird feeling of like shock and like immediately we all felt uncomfortable and these three people who came in they didn't seem to care i mean i would say also that they seem to kind of enjoy that it was causing everyone discomfort. They seemed like they were almost hoping that someone would say something. They had kind of this air about them that seemed like ready to be confrontational. And, um, you know, like I said earlier, there was, it's mostly a Korean spa. It's like 90% Korean. And then like hip LA people who want to like just try Korean cultural stuff. So the older Korean ladies, like really, really old, were like peeking out from behind the stalls and, you know, holding up their towels and they, I could see them, I could see their faces looking kind of shocked and everybody and like, the, the spa was pretty quiet, but everybody was like signaling to each other and like motioning and trying to look. And, you know, I, I mean, the way that I just, I've described it before is that these people came in with kind of like, their white progressive values and politics into this super Korean space with kind of just like no regard at all for 
how other people felt like they just felt like really entitled to kind of establish their their politics in this space with nude Korean older Korean people who obviously don't share that um so at that moment I mean I was kind of in shock for like a, I don't know maybe a minute or so and I talked to my daughter I blocked my daughter so she didn't see this and I just kind of told her okay honey time to get out let's go you know and she's like splashing around she doesn't want to get out but I, I got her to come out and I kind of maneuvered myself to like block her as she got out so did one of the other women also kind of shuffled over closer to us to like allow me and my daughter to get out without my daughter seeing the person with the penis and the beard. So we got out and we went to the locker room and we got dressed and then we went back upstairs to the um, to the counter so that I could talk to somebody about it. And uh, you know, I was like, I was upset and I was kind of emotional and um, I was trying to like not let my daughter kind of listen to what the problem was. So I went up to the counter and I talked to somebody and Thankfully, they kind of immediately knew why I was upset and um, but they were really kind and they were very understanding and they basically just told me there's nothing we can do. This person is a pre-op trans person and you know, um, and I was like, uh, my daughter was there and they're like, I'm, I know, I understand, I'm sorry. And they gave me two free passes and oh, I forgot that when I was in the locker room, I was approached by another woman who had seen that I was in the hot tub with my daughter. And she walked over to me and my daughter and she whispered to me that the staff had told her this was a pre-op trans person and that the staff had asked them to cover up and they had refused. I waited for some other officer to come out and speak speak to me about it. So those two officers were great. Like no disrespect to the police, those two officers were, were wonderful. They were very kind. The third officer I spoke to, um, when I explained to him what happened, um, his response to me was, uh, why would you take your daughter to a place like that in the first place? Why did you expose your daughter to that? And so when he said that to me, I felt like I had just been punched in the stomach and I started crying. <laughs> and I tried to explain to this officer, like, it's a Korean spa, that's how they do it. And he just, I, I mean, and I'm not equating this with like sexual assault at all, but I suddenly understood what women said, you know, about the victim blaming. I felt like he was obviously he was blaming me and I just felt like he was right and I felt like ashamed and like I said I felt like like he had just punched me in the stomach so he explained that it was um California law and he explained that it was a private business they could do whatever they wanted and that maybe I just shouldn't be taking my daughter to places like that and you know I left in tears and um and then I just didn't talk about it anymore because, you know, I felt like, you know, he was right and it was my fault and I was stupid. And after that, I just didn't, I didn't talk about it because I knew being from, you know, super progressive LA, like if I tried to post about it, I would just get called a transphobe, I could lose my job, I, you know, so I couldn't complain about it, I couldn't speak about it. And then also, I just, after speaking to the officer, I just felt like I would, I just felt ashamed. In my opinion, this is a horrible way of getting people to accept things they find unacceptable. It seems we are at a crossroads in our society where anything goes if you have enough backing. As she describes in the video, she concluded these were young activist types that used their entitlement to force their politics in a predominantly older Korean establishment. I felt bad to hear her story, how she felt when the officers talked to her, and worse that she is afraid of speaking out publicly for fear of being cancelled, losing her job and being called things she probably isn't. Those are my thoughts, what are yours? Leave them in the comments below, please share this video for education and awareness, for the Dumb Dumb News channel, I'm Dumb Dumb.